Hey guys, it's Kristen and welcome or welcome back. I am here to proudly report that I kicked February's butt. I read 12 books in February and one short story. I participated in a readathon, which is actually the reason that I had such a good reading month. I really pushed myself for this one. I am gonna start with the books that I read outside of the readathon, which were the books I read in the first two weeks of February. The first book I read in February was The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. This is the third book in the Poppy War series, and this is one of my favorite series currently. I'm a little bit, a little bit disappointed with the ending of this one, but I totally get it. I totally get it. And I, it's one of those endings that I generally would love anywhere else, but I was just so invested in Rin and like just this whole thing. And I, it just, what? Like, I understand why people thought the second book was better than the third book. I read it and I enjoyed it. It's still one of my favorite series. Next, I read The Wedding Party by Jasmine Guillory. This was, when I picked this up, I just picked it up because I, I, I needed like filler, filler books for my attention. And I wasn't aware that it was like a number in a series. It's I think number three in the Wedding Day series, but I have deduced that it doesn't really matter the order in which you read these. The characters are just connected. That being said, it follows Maddie and Theo who have never really liked each other. It's a hate to love story and they are then forced to spend a lot of time together because they are both part of their mutual friend's wedding party. I really like hate to love stories so it was a good kind of palate cleanser for the month. It's a good time if you need like a light fluffy filler read. Next I read Catch Me If You Can or I listened to it on audio and this is by Frank Abagnale Jr. This is what the movie, the Tom Hanks and Leo DiCaprio movie, Catch Me If You Can, is based off of. And this basically is just his life and how he did what he did. He was a very, very successful con man. And I just want to take a little bit of a tiny moment to applaud Mr. Abagnale uh, because his con life the origin story of his con life. He did it all for the ladies and like, whatever, you do you, good job. That being said, it was a really good memoir. It basically follows like the movie. Like if you've watched the movie, you really don't need to read the book, but it, it was interesting. There are like little differences and a little bit more detail. It was a good time. Next, I read The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book in the Mistborn trilogy, Era One. I am reading this as, uh, too many things now. I'm reading this as part of a year long read along with Cosmere Conquest, orchestrated by Benedict at Ben's Blurb. Um, and then I am joining on Cosmere Unbounded, which is a little more of a slower paced, seemingly more manageable way to digest the Cosmere uh, with a bunch of other booktubers. So The Final Empire follows Vin, who is lower class, poor, kind of orphaned, and she has these powers. And then she falls into uh, Kelsier's band of misfits in their ploy to overturn like the ruling class. And uh, yeah, I love this book. I love this book so much. I actually bought it like forever ago and I have been putting it off. I was going to buddy read it with some people in the shelf space discord in November. And then Ben announced Cosmere Conquest and I was like, you know what, that seems kind of more my pace. And so I put it off until this February and I, I fucking loved it. It's so good. I'm so certain that I am going to love like all the Cosmere books that I am planning to buy all of the pretty, the pretty UK editions of, of these books. Next, I read Sex and Vanity by Kevin Kwan. This was actually one of my 
most anticipated releases of 2020. I just didn't get to it back then. I finally got to it and I'm wondering why the fuck I gave this my time. I can't even tell you what it's about because I just didn't care. I didn't care. Um, I, the, 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 the basic gist is there's like this rich chick who goes off to some wedding or something and gets caught doing God knows what with this dude who everyone thinks is weird. And I, I don't, I just didn't care. I didn't care. I just, it, it was such a letdown because I loved the Crazy Rich Asians books. And I just, I don't believe that the same author wrote this book. My next read was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. And I know that this is kind of a darling on booktube and in the book community lately, but I just didn't care. I didn't care about the story. I enjoyed my time with it. It was fair enough. Schwab's writing is literally the only thing that like kept me holding on. She writes beautifully, but the story itself was just whatever for me. That being said, I would totally be into like a book solely about Luke. Also, this was my first time reading Schwab and I, I loved her writing. I just didn't care about the story. And so I am hoping to go into like one of her other series because I, I think I'll have a better time somewhere else. These next books are what I read for Demonathon, which is the readathon I participated in the last two weeks of February. This is orchestrated by Yumi at Yumi the Book Dragon. She does such an amazing job with this readathon. It is so interactive, so immersive. You have to go on to a website that she creates and go on a journey to find the prompts. It's the best readathon that I have to come across in the book community yet. And she's doing like a full month version of this, uh, the Demonathon, the Grand Hotel in August. So if you are interested in this at all, I please come join us because it's, it's so fun. First book I read for Demonathon was Conceal Don't Feel by Jen Kulanita. This is a uh, Disney Twisted Tales book and it is an alternate story to Frozen. And it's the premise is what if Elsa and Anna didn't know each other? So they are sisters in the book, but Anna is sent to a village to live her life separately because you know that point in the movie where when they're young and Elsa hits Anna in the head with her magic and they have to erase all magic. Basically that happens in the book but the consequences are worse. I liked this book, actually. I, I feel like I would be down to see this movie over the original Frozen movie. It was a good time. Next, I read Siege and Storm by Leigh Bardugo. This is the second book in the Grisha trilogy, and I didn't have a good time with Shadow and Bone. I didn't. I just didn't care about the story. It was boring. Alina is insufferable. Mal is insufferable. But one of the prompts was to read a book that's been on your TBR for forever. And I just finally bit the bullet and read this book. This book was a little bit better than Shadow and Bone. I still don't like Alina. She's dumb, she's annoying. She gets a little bit better, like directly at the end of Siege and Storm. Just a little bit though. I'm, I'll be interested to see where she goes in the next book. What's the next book? Ruin and Rising. Next, I read Clap Where You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. And oh my God, this book, this woman and her writing, I th I don't think she can do any wrong. Clap When You Land is about two sisters who don't know about each other's existence, but then they find out about each other when their father dies in a plane crash on his way to visit one of the daughters. I knew that this was going to be an emotional book. I didn't know that it was going to affect me so much. I cried, like I cried tears. It's good. If you love a good emotional read and just beautiful fucking writing, just pick up any Elizabeth as available. Next, I read A Court of Frost and Starlight. This was a reread for me. That was one of the prompts for Demonathon. This is the fourth installment. It's the novella in the Akatar series and it follows Feyre and 
her crew during the solstice. There's not like too much to say about it. I will say that when I first read it, I didn't like it. I was like, what the fuck is this book? Doesn't need to exist. You wasted my time. This second time that I read it, I appreciated it more. I actually, I actually kind of liked it. Yeah. And that brings me into my next read, A Court of Silver Flames. And this is Sarah J. Mass's new book in the Akatar universe. And it follows Nesta, who is Feyre's bitchy sister, and her hate to love whatever dude, uh, Cassian, who is Rhysand's bro. This was a good book. I'm not going to say too much about it because it's still new, but it follows Nesta on a self-discovery journey to being okay. Next, I read a short story called Hello Moto. Um, I'm going to be honest, this was a, this was a group buddy read for the readathon, but I'm going to be honest because I read it two weeks ago and it was kind of like a faster read. I don't remember a whole lot. I remember that the end was kind of abrupt and not like wholly satisfying. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and see if I can digest it a little bit slower and reevaluate my thoughts on that. And the last book that I read in February and for Demonathon was Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is a contemporary romance and it follows Chloe Brown, who is a chronically ill, she has fibromyalgia, um, young woman. And she's walking home one night and almost gets run over by a car. And it makes her realize that she is living her life too safely, too safely. And so she makes a list of things that she considers would mean she got a life. Enter Red, who is her building manager, and it's hate to love, but Red is just so endearing and charming, and he's dealing with his own shit. He's got PSTD from a past relationship, but the way that he reacts to Chloe's illness was just so... Uh, he's not there to strictly just to save her. He's there to help her save herself. And that is something that I can really appreciate in a love interest. So that is what I read in February. I had a super good time with most of these books. Only like two or three of them were kind of whatever for me, but I enjoyed my time. And I know that I am not gonna be able to keep this momentum up for the rest of the year. So I'm just gonna relish in this tiny moment of good reading. So that's it from me for today. Let me know in the comments what you read in February or what you're planning to read in March or just leave a wine glass because I love to know that you've been here. If you want to see more of me and my bookish nonsense, I would love if you would consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.